Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm hoping you're having a great Wednesday. <clears throat> I can't wait to see everybody tomorrow. So we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Yesterday, we left off just with one slide left to go. Um, and it was about investments, investments, making money work for you. That's the big thing you need to do. You can have as much money as you want, but you've got to have some of that savings money and money working for you behind the scenes. So you have to invest. And the way that you invest, <clears throat> you can buy stocks in the stock market. You can buy real estate, meaning you can buy houses and rent them out. Um, or you can buy war bonds, okay? Not many people buy war bonds anymore, but what basically what war bonds is, is you're giving money to the government to use, and then they give it back to you, like, in a, in, like they either double or triple it when they give it back to you. But it's usually over a certain amount of time. So it's either like 10 years or 15 years. Um, and that's guaranteed investments back. Um, you get money back guaranteed on that. Um, there's always a risk first reward. The only one that I talked about that doesn't have a risk is war bonds unless the government doesn't exist anymore. And that's not really going to happen. Um, you can lose money, but you can also gain money. So before you invest any type of money, it's very, very important to talk to a professional. Okay. So that's where we left off yesterday. Um, we just had one slide left to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about making decisions, budgets, borrowing, renting, and credits. Okay. And that's a lot. And I, and I get that, that that's a lot. Um, the Ohio State standard is your economic strand and the topic of financial literacy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. By the end of today's class, you'll be able to answer what does creating a budget help why does creating a budget help you and what does it help you do? What is a negative of credit cards? What is a benefit of credit cards? And what is the difference between borrowing, lending, and renting? Okay. All right. So your vocabulary words, <clears throat> decision is the ability to make a choice. That's pretty self-explanatory what a decision means. Budget is just a plan used to decide the amount of money that can be spent and how it will be spent. We'll get more into that in this lesson as uh, we go forward. Personal is relating to an individual. That's all personal is. Borrowing is using something that belongs to someone else with the promise to return it. Hey, can I borrow your pencil? Sure. You use the pencil, you give it back to the person. That's all it is. That's all borrowing is. Renting is a regular payment to an owner of a property for the right to live in or use of the property. Now, this does not just have to be about a house, okay? I've rented machinery from companies before where I paid them a give payment. And I rented the machine and I took it back to them. Credit is money that a bank or business will allow a person to use and then pay back in the future, usually with interest. Okay, so that is just simply like a credit card or a loan or something like that. All right, so cost and benefits. The cost, things you have to give up. That's what the cost is. Basically money for items, okay? So... Usually, a lot of times when people think of the cost, they just think money, but it could be stuff, other stuff, but we'll focus on money for right now. So whenever you go to the store and you see a gallon of milk is $2.19, that's the cost, right? So what's the cost? The money that you have to pay for it, okay? So you give up the money and that's the cost. What's the benefit of it? Things the decision maker gains, right? The benefit is you bought a gallon of milk. Now you can drink milk. That's the benefit. And it's whatever you buy. So it's whatever you buy. Milk, clothes, etc. It's That's the benefit. So when you consider your options on cost and benefits, the things that you need versus the things you want. This is coming up again, guys. So this is probably going to be on the test. The needs and the wants, okay? Um, you need to weigh your options, right? Things you need versus the things you want. And you got to look at the money. Example, car or video games. So we get to look at the cost and benefit of each, okay? So William will be driving in six months. He wants to drive to school. Obviously, everybody drives to school when they turn 16, whatever they want to. Uh, car costs around $3,000. He doesn't have enough money yet. So William understands that he doesn't have enough money to buy a car, but he wants a car. William has enough money to buy a video game here, 
the class is $500 plus two games of $70, and he'll be able to play with friends immediately. Okay, so that's the benefit of a video game. The benefit of the car was that he'd be able to drive to school. So we're going to weigh the cost and the benefits. Cost of buying the car. What is giving up is money and the PlayStation, right? The cost of buying the car is that he wouldn't be able to play video games, and he'll have to wait and save more money to buy the car. But the benefit of the car is that he could drive to school in other places, drive around with his friends, and have more freedom. All right, so that makes sense, right? The cost is the money, and the benefit is what the car will allow him to do. The cost of buying a video game. The cost of buying a video game console is he isn't going to be able to buy a car. He'll lose the ability to drive to school. But the benefit of the video game is how he can buy it. He can buy it now, and he can play it now. So instead of waiting for him to save up $3,000, this video game is, an, is a now purchase. So whenever you have this, you just considered your costs and benefits, right? We just did that. So the video games, the cost is the ability to drive to school and the car. He's no longer going to be able to buy a car and he's no longer going to be able to, ability to drive to school if he buys a video game. The benefit is he'll play games, play with friends, and already has enough money to buy it. He doesn't have to save up money. So the cost of the car is obviously the money and he's not going to be able to play video games. But he has to have he has to save up money. He still needs more money to buy it. So he has to save his money to buy the car. But the benefit is to drive to school, drive to other places, drive friends, and he will have a little bit of freedom. So he would have to weigh his cost and the benefit on the video game versus the car. So after you weigh the cost and the benefit, after you do all that, the thing that you want to do is you want to create a budget, okay? And a budget is something really simple just to keep track of money, okay? All budget does is help keep track of the money, okay? It'll also help you save money because it'll tell you what do you need, how much money, how long will it take, and can you save the money, okay? So say you have $100 coming in and you know that you have to buy groceries, and you say, okay, I'm going to put $50 towards groceries. Okay. And then you say, okay, I need to make get gas in the car. That's going to cost me $20. So that leaves you $30 left over, right? So then you're like, okay, so I'm going to take $30. And I'm going to take 10 of it and buy food if I go out to dinner or something like that. And then $20, I'm going to save it. So then that's how a budget will help you. You know exactly where it goes how much you spent, where you spent it. And then you'll be able to sit down and, and say, I only want to spend so much money at certain places. That's what a budget does. Okay. So if we're going to practice this, you have $12 and what do you want to buy? Okay. Obviously you can't buy everything there. Okay. You have $12. If you went to the movies, you don't even have $5 left. And you can get a pop and a candy bar or a water and a candy bar or a water and a pop, or just a popcorn. All right, so you would have to make decisions. And this is where a budget comes into play at. You know you have $12 and you want to be able to figure out what you want to get. So you weigh your wants and your needs and your costs and your benefits, right? That's all that is. So again, here's what we're going to, I'm going to ask you on the test. What does creating a budget help you do? It keeps track of the money earned and spent, okay? That's exactly what a budget does. It keeps track of all the money that you earned and spent, okay? So what can you do with money? You can either spend it or you can save it, right? Or saving it is part of investing it. That's two things you can do with money. You can also get an awesome haircut like this guy right here. Um, so those are the two things that you can do with money. You can lend it to somebody. So that means you let somebody borrow it, usually with interest. Let me go back to this slide here, guys. These are two of the most obvious things that you can do with money. Spend it or save it, right? Those are the two most common things. But there's other things that you can do with it. Like you can lend it to somebody, let someone borrow it, 
and usually with interest. And what that means is, and I'll get into a little bit more detail with that. Um, if you if you lend somebody a hundred dollars, you got to pay them back a hundred and five. So the fee to borrow the hundred dollars is five dollars. So that's that's how interest kind of works. And that's all we have to realize about that right now. We're not going to go into great detail about interest, but just know that if you borrow a certain amount of money, usually you pay back more than what you borrowed. So how does renting work? And some of you guys know this, some of you may not, but renting is to use something for a fee. Okay. And when you hear rent, you usually think of apartments. Okay. But at the same time, you think of, you can think of renting machines or renting a car, or you can do all kinds of things for renting. Okay. It's not just apartments. Um, so how does renting work? You use something for a fee, usually for a set amount of time. Okay. Apartments, you got to pay monthly rent machines. Like I said, whenever I rented a machine, whenever I was working on my house daily rent. Okay. I paid a certain amount of money and used a machine for a day. Okay. Sometimes you can rent an appliance at stores and it's paid off payments until it's paid off. But usually whenever you rent a, an appliance for a long time and it's rent to own, you're paying usually high fees with those. Okay. So that's how renting works. You're just paying somebody to use something for a certain amount of time. All right, so what about borrowing? Borrowing is completely different than, than renting, okay? Borrowing is using something that belongs to someone else with a promise to return the item, no fees or no cost. And the best way to think about this is a library book. You're not, you're not buying the library book. You're not renting the library book. You're borrowing it, right? You can go into the library, say, hey, I want to borrow this book. They scan your library card. They tell you when it has to be back. And you promise to return it by that date. And that is what borrowing is about. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about credit cards. So credit cards can be nice, but they can also be not so nice. Uh, credit cards and how they work. They buy now, pay later. Okay. So it's fantastic, right? You can say, hey, I'm going to charge this off. I'm going to put this on my credit card. I don't have the money, but I'm going to borrow it on my credit card and they will allow you to use it and get the item, but you're going to pay back that money with a high interest high interest charge, okay? So that basically means you're going to get a high fee with it. For example, if you buy something for $100, if you take as long as they give you to pay it back, it's going to cost that item that was $100 is going to cost you $300. So you got to be careful with credit cards when you do that, Okay. So that's that's usually that's the negative of this. That whenever you have a hundred dollar item, you're usually paying back more than what it's worth. So that item is not worth three hundred dollars, but that's what you, essentially what you paid for it. There are some benefits of credit cards, and you can pay little per month, secure the item of need, meaning you get that item today, and you don't need a full amount. So if you were going to, I don't know, Walmart. And now let's not go Walmart. Let's go um, like Lowe's or Home Depot. And you need a new refrigerator. Well, you don't have the two thousand dollars to buy a new refrigerator, but you have a credit card that has two thousand dollars. You say, you know what? I'm going to put this on my credit card. I will pay it off eventually. So what the credit card will do is they want you to pay as little as you can per month as long as it's on time, because the longer it takes you to pay it, the more money that they make. Okay. So that is a benefit. <clears throat> you can pay little per month. Okay, you don't have to pay the whole $2,000 right away. And you get the item today and you don't need a full amount. Okay. So the negatives of the credit card, like I already said, you pay more than what it's worth. That $2,000, that $2,000 uh, refrigerator may actually equal $4,000 by the time you pay off your credit card bill because of all the fees and the interest. So you got to be careful, okay? Interest rates are high, meaning that they're going to charge you fees every month and it's going to be higher and higher. You can have a high monthly bill. And here's the other thing. You can pay item off years after purchase that you may not even have it anymore. 
So say it takes you 10 years to pay off that refrigerator, okay? So in 10 years, you pay off the refrigerator, off the credit card. What, happen, what happens if the refrigerator breaks in year eight? You're still paying for it, but you no longer have it. Okay, so that would be a negative of the credit card. <clears throat> so did you get it? We're going to go over this. I'm going to put a book it in tomorrow um, and allow you guys to go over to book it. We're going to play book it tomorrow. So we'll have all the questions that will be on the end of the quiz and in the module. So we want to make sure that we do that. Um, and then for homework today, what I need you to do is I need you to read Making Decisions and Budgeting. Do not do the assignments in the reading, okay? Do not do the assignments in the reading. I, I've, this, I'm like saying this over and over again because I don't want you to waste your time, okay? Read borrowing, renting, and credit. Again, do not do the assignments in the reading, okay? Um, do I do need you to do the work week three homework ed puzzle money. That's what I need you guys to do there. And then you also need to study your quiz study guide. And then if you guys go on your own and turn in CNN 10, you can do that for bonus points. Okay. That is all there is for today. I hope you have a great Wednesday and I will see everybody manana, which is Spanish for tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye guys.